Right, so we talked about direct materials, breaking it down to price variance, efficiency variance, direct labor, also break it down to price variance, efficiency variance. For manufacturing overhead, we first of all consider two categories. We will have variable manufacturing overhead and we will have fixed overhead. So can you think of some of the example of variable overhead? But first of all, what is overhead? All the indirect materials, indirect labor cons is considered manufacturing overhead and basically the definition is that it's hard to trace these costs to specific product lines. So some of the machinery, if you use it for multiple CD products, for multiple DVD products, or it's just, if it's just a printing machine that prints the label, the depreciation on that machine, these costs or maintaining that machine's uh, usefulness on repair maintenance, all these costs are considered manufacturing overhead. Remember, plan manager's salary is considered fixed overhead. So variable overhead are those that really is like indirect materials, indirect labor that will still float along with the more productions, the more costs is occurred. Some of the fixed overhead is like straight line depreciation on machinery, plan manager, janitor, salary are considered, if it's based on contract, then it's considered a fixed overhead. So this is just refreshing a memory on what manufacturing overhead is. And when we consider variances, we break it down into two different categories of variances. We will consider variable overhead um, uh, in one category and then fixed overhead in the other. So what this is showing here is just Refreshing our memory on earlier when we determine unit cost of a certain product. If a certain product, let's say the cost at the end is $8 and you mark it up to sell customers, let's say $15. We determine this $8 based on how much direct materials is used, how much direct labor is used, and then overhead, we also have variable overhead. We have fixed overhead. Add them all together, that will determine the $8 unit cost, okay? So this, will, this comes from earlier, of course, the whole package of direct materials, how much we purchased, and then divided by, let's say, 8,000 units that we produced. So we will have a unit cost for direct materials. We will have a unit cost for direct labor, unit cost for manufacturing overhead. So this is the unit cost that we budgeted for this particular example, that 8,000 DVDs, right? So we budgeted that the total variable overhead based on the, remember the indirect materials, indirect labor. Altogether, we assume that we'll be producing 8,000 DVD sets and this is heavily, let's say this company is heavily related to the, their labors. So they wanted to use the allocation base as labor hours rather than machine hours. So this is given to you in the problem. They use 3,200 labor hours as a base to consider all these 6,400 costs. Okay, so then each hour they will be directing, they'll be assigning $2 as variable overhead to each hour of workers, uh, each hour of workers work when they contributed to producing a certain product. Okay, so this is the sort of like the base rate, the standard rate for variable overhead, which earlier in the first three chapters, usually we just directly give it to you. Okay, now for a fixed overhead, we assume that there's $9,600, which again relates to plan manager's salary, janitor's salary, or straight line depreciation on machinery. And the company also decides to use the labor hours as the allocation base. Okay, so overall, the fixed cost here is $3 that we, for each and, out, each and every hour's uh, work that the employees did with this product line, they assigned $2 as variable overhead, $3 as fixed overhead. Okay, I wanna bring this up front because later on we'll be using these as a comparison base. So basically this is the standard price for variable overhead. This is the standard price for fixed overhead. So what are we doing here? We're comparing whether or not the actual overhead that was assigned to the jobs is the same 